All right. I can't say this title. How do you say it? The Inkyridian. Inkyridian. Okay. I I forget even what the book does. I just remember it shows him like it explains how to kiss princesses because <laughs> I guess kissing princesses is different from kissing other girls. Um, so I, what did the book do again? I forgot. Basically it's like the ultimate book for adventurers. Okay. It, it has like in a sense if you will tips and tricks on how to do anything and there's also other stories in it. It's like in the Ed Jones handbook. Like kind of, sort yeah. of thing. Okay so he has to go and oh he doesn't have to he just likes going on these adventures because he apparently, the name of the show is Adventure Time, so bada bing. Uh, and he's, he has like an addiction, I'm noticing more and more. Just like eight times, it's like, we're going to an adventure. He's like an adventure. I wonder, like he's pounding the ground and stuff. So I kind of like that. I like how like kind of insane he is about something so innocent. Um, and they go, on, they go on this adventure. And the, the two things that I really remember in this one, the one is the... Um, uh, the key guy who, I'm guessing that's the Micro Machine yes. guy. What I like about that is that they obviously use his talent that he can talk very fast, but he's doing a voice as well. I really mm -hmm. like that. I like it's not just, oh, Micro Machine Man doing his thing. It's like, no, he sort of has this little voice, and he's going to talk fast like that. And that's hilarious. Um, and he has the giant key on his head, which, of course, everyone figures out how to open the door. <laughs> he never realizes how they figure it out. Um, and his devil pajamas. Do you have devil pajamas? No. We I've should get devil pajamas. pajamas. <laughs> we should get it. Because everyone goes to bed with a triton, too. <laughs> well, why not? I was going to bed with my triton. <laughs> um... And then what, what was the other... Oh, the... Were those trolls that they saved? Or little fairies? Or what were those? Gnomes. Gnomes. Okay, the... They, they save these gnomes from, like, a pool of fire, which is already, like, so violent. But then it gets, like, much worse. It's like, they figure, it's like, there you go. It's like, good, now we're gonna kill old ladies. And they just start blowing up old ladies at random. And it's like, every and every time they know what he's gonna do, it's like, every time you say what, we're gonna blow up another old lady. What? Boom! Every time you say no, we're gonna blow up another one. No! Boom! And it's just... I was watching that, like, how the hell are they getting away with this? This is a freak. You know, at first we were like, in the last episode, I'm like, oh, no, they said sexy. That's a little risque. Now they're blowing up old ladies. <laughs> but I guess the way they got around it is they just said, it's an illusion, right? Mm -hmm. And don't they pop up at the end again? Yeah. And then one, like, when he does his little freeze logo at the end, another one disappears. Is that, like, does that come into play later? I will say at this point in time, perhaps. <laughs> okay. Because now that you said that, I'm just looking for, like, everything. Though I didn't locate the snail. Um, uh, now, in the comments, there's going to be a million people like, The snail was here! Uh, so... <laughs> no, no, no. See, that's the best part about the show, at least for... Uh, partially for me. It's that, yeah, you don't catch the snail in your first viewing. Or your second viewing. Or maybe even your third viewing. But there are so many things in the background that's going on. Uh-huh. That, like, even when you rewatch it and you're not watching what's mainly going on, you're catching all these neat little things in the background. Yeah, it always seems like it's really crowded a mm -hmm. lot. There's always, like, a lot of weird creatures there. And now I'm just looking at it, it's like, well, is that going to come back? Is that going to come back? Is that... See, now I'm, like, questioning everything, even though I haven't seen anything come back yet, really. <laughs> but just... I'm, I'm, like, trying to be ahead of the game. But, uh, <laughs> again, that's the nice thing. I don't think you can be ahead of the game with this show. By any means. It's really, really, really difficult to try to <laughs> I think if anyone could actually predict everything that was going to happen in the show, they're in, like, a mental institution or, like, stoned off their ass or something. <laughs> because, yeah, there's, like, no way this <laughs> anyone could predict it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and uh, what, what was that thing that had the... Uh, it, it had, like, the, the cloak over its face and the red eyes and stuff. Does that have a name or no? No, at least if he does, I've never heard it Okay, or anything. and it's, uh, I, and that thing was pretty cool. And I, I, I sort of like the idea of, like, whatever, kill this monster. It was a very creative design for a monster. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was sort of, what, I forget, was it, like, two hearts or, like, a heart and a liver or something? I, yeah, something like that. Then there was, like, almost tentacles and there was a skeletal glowing hand. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was pretty out there in creator, which I liked. And then I like, you know, kill this ant. It's like, is it an evil ant? Which is just a great question in general. <laughs> and then he's like, no, it's not evil, it's not good, it's neutral. Destroy it. And again, to the character's credit, I like that. He's like, no, I want to destroy a neutral ant. And he, <laughs> I guess he kicks that guy in the groin to death. Guard kicking ability. Yeah, like he j literally vanishes after that. <laughs> um, 
And the the other joke I'll say real fast I really really liked was the uh, was the the manatee or manator. What's it called again? Manly minotaur. The manly minotaur who comes <laughs> out and when he flexes his muscular arms have muscular arms in them. That was great. Like that's a really inventive joke. Um, so aside from that, the, the only other thing I'm noticing with this show that's kind of neat and maybe one of the few shows that I've seen pull it off is that the show has a way of being both disgustingly cute and revolting at the same time like you can look at the exact same design and go oh or go oh yeah. you know you you can't it's just whatever you see in it and i like that i like you can sort of do that combo because when i first started off i didn't like the design of the show mm. uh, that's one of the reasons i didn't get into it especially because like dot eyes yeah i don't like in things i i forget if i mentioned that before but like i think calvin hobbs could do it and animaniacs could do mm. it but i've never seen any other show make it interesting yeah but it, but they, they kind of cheat with it a bit they'll give him like real eyes or like at one point i remember he got angry and he had like three dot eyes in his head because it's that crazy so so they kind of work with it and have fun with it which oh, yeah. i think is kind of cool um but uh yeah that's that's about it i can think for this one any other tidbits that you think should be mentioned about this one um one thing i really enjoy about this one is so finn is going after the Enchiridion, which is the ultimate adventurer's handbook and he, at numerous times, he kind of says, screw the handbook, I'm going to do this. Because they hear the help, and Jake is like, oh, what about the book? And he's like, not now. Kind of yeah, showing him, that shows, that, which gets him the book. Exactly. Yeah. It shows that he's not just concerned with this, he's more concerned with being a good person over just getting this all-powerful book, mm -hmm. which is great. And then along those lines, the Enchiridion. That comes into play later on. Well, I had a feeling that would. That's Very... like the one thing I'm like, well, okay, I know they gotta do something else with this. If for any reason the design of the book is way too good. <laughs> that becomes a major player, if you will. Okay. No, that'll be interesting. I, I was sort of, I was hoping it would, because it's like, oh, this is, like, it just has a lot of fun possibilities, mm -hmm. like the Adventurer's Handbook. It just sounds like a fun book to own in general. Yeah. You know, like even just How to Kiss Princesses. It's like, that's just a funny chapter. It's like, oh, what else is in here? Like that, how to run away from a giant ball chasing you or something like that. <laughs> like, that I'm sure there's a lot of things they can do. So, um, yeah. Oh, before I forget, I want to whore off your podcast. Because I don't know how many people know it. Okay, what do you want me to say? Say the podcast oh. <laughs> and where they can listen to it, dumbass. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, it's the Forced Viewing Podcast. Um, it's at forcedviewing.com, and it's available on iTunes. It's available on iTunes. <laughs> Was someone, give, someone coaching you there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't do this very often. So. <laughs> <laughs> and they got, and I, I've been on a few of them, too. I've been in uh, uh, the Forced Viewing also, uh, What's in the Skull, which is yeah. a lot of fun. So uh, if you haven't seen that, check it out. They talk about not Adventure Time yet. Yes. But maybe you will. Maybe you will next time. Or maybe you'll be so sick of it talking by the end of today. Maybe you'll just... I don't think you could get sick of no. it the more thing about it. No, okay. So, I love the show. The show is great. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll see more in the next one. Take care.